Uh, we could really save some money there, too. Mr. Steiler, your 30 second response. Again, I can't emphasize enough how great the program that we currently have within Flipside for the Nevada Speaker Series has been very successful. We've had as many as four or 500 students attend many of these events, as well as some community members. And this is really something that I think with, as Mr. Jose said, a little bit more advertising can really just continue and grow and flourish as one of the many programs that ASUN and Flipside currently put on that serve an educational purpose here on campus. Mr. Chair? Yes, we've, we've been successful at bringing in international speakers and different speakers of different specializations. It really is on your communication, making sure that we're getting the greatest depth and breadth of students to attend these um, speeches and these guest lectures that we bring here. So we're really going to have to target our students, and that is really getting down to planning. You know, we bring all these people in and we get motivation here. We need to also ensure that we are planning adequately ahead of time to communicate with yes, them. Mr. Jose? Uh, go off of that with planning. We need to make sure that we are effectively reaching every student and making sure that they know that these things are going on, as well as reaching out to um, ask what they want to see. Okay, we have time for one more video question. This one is to be started with Mr. Kim. I'm Marina. My major is biology. And my question is, I want to know what you are going to do to make parking easier on campus, more free parking for students who can't afford to buy parking passes for the semester. Whoop. I'll grow another kitten. Um, <laughs> Parking is expensive. No laps, I mean, come on. Parking is expensive, that's true. But you know, in comparison to other um, universities, we're actually relatively cheap on here. And this is a hard discussion because um, parking and transportation is actually a separate department that we'll need to discuss. Perhaps going and visiting with the parking and transportation, talking about a tiered structure um, based off of what you are capable to pay as a student. Um, again, <coughs> I wasn't expecting this question at all, but the biggest thing is, is going up to y'all and asking what, what solutions do you think will happen? Um, I can't have all the solutions, and this is one of them where I honestly don't have a solution on at the top of my hat. So it would have to be going out with me and my staff, going out and visiting with y'all, finding out what discussion, what you guys would like to see, and then working with the parking and transportation to ensure those changes go into place, but also what their long-term goal is, making sure those things mesh. Um, I know that we've been going through a series of things. Um, I know parking transportation is willing to work with students. They did when we converted Sierra Hall over back over to a residence hall. They allowed them to two parking there. Um, so it's just working and moving forward. Mr. Nozick? Yeah, and parking transportation is actually something that the Nevada System of Higher Education uh, does. And so uh, it is gathering some input on what uh, you guys want to see. Uh, another interesting point that I had, uh, I was talking to somebody and um, they were involved in clubs and organizations and one of their main issues was that uh, they would come to the, uh, the union or the library to work on things dedicated to their club and organization, but they couldn't find any parking and get tickets all the time. So maybe uh, an avenue that we could go into is like <coughs> purchasing parking vouchers for our students or club leaders. Uh, I don't know how that could work out, but that's uh, definitely a uh, possible solution that we could have. It's just a matter of starting a conversation with students. Mr. Steinberg. This is an issue very near and dear to my heart. I've had the opportunity to uh, have my car booted on campus, which I should have said was my biggest failure. Um, I've also had the opportunity to pay upwards of $700 in a year in two parking services, so a bunch of tax there. Um, but the real issue here, I think, isn't trying to walk into the, the parking services offices and telling them to change their current policies. What we should be doing, in my opinion, is developing some kind of program to, again, educate and empower students on how to find maybe different sources of financial aid on campus. Midway through the year this year, there was over $200,000 left in scholarships that had not been given out by the financial aid office on campus. They give out roughly, I think it's $18, $18 million in scholarships each year. If students can't afford the parking pass, they may not be able to afford, afford other amenities that they need being a college student. So helping them to find the avenues to find that money that is there and be able to afford a parking pass is going to be something that we can probably do a little bit easier than getting the Nevada system of higher education to change its parking policies. So again, it all comes back to educating and empowering students. If they can't afford the parking pass, we need to try to find a way to help them find a way to afford it. Mr. Chairman. 
Yeah, there were two great ideas that already came up here. We have uh, parking vouchers and also carpooling. Um, it's just, again, definitely getting more feedback and brainstorming more ideas. However, to look into resources such as financial aid, I would be very hesitant when we have students who are looking at buying books or eating for the next week. And to be going over one of those life-sustaining substances over a parking pass, I would be a little hesitant to, to go over to financial aid and look at that as a possibility. Mr. Jose? Uh, like I said earlier, uh, really um, working with students to find out what uh, it is that we can do as ASU One to solve this issue. Uh, this, we can't just make these decisions. We need input from the students. Mr. Steiner? And yeah, just to clarify, I'm not necessarily saying that students should be paying for parking before food, but what I am pointing out is that if a student cannot afford a parking pass and they need, desperately need one because they also do not live on campus, we should still be trying to help them find a way to meet their needs because all of the students on this campus have different needs and it is hard financial times. So if they need to find a way to afford a parking pass, ASUN should be the avenue that they use to find that needs. Okay, um, we're going to do closing statements now. It's Mr. Jose's turn, so we will start with Mr. Jose. Uh, uh, again, I am running to build this campus community. Uh, I know there are tons of students out there who don't even know what ASUN is, but look what we do. Uh, my campaign is really to reach out to those people, to incorporate everything uh, from everybody, uh, because we can be doing more. We can be doing tons more to reach out to the students who uh, aren't normally involved. Uh, we can be providing more services that students actually want. Uh, Mr. Steiler? Um, yeah, again, I'd just like to point out the, the main thing that I want to push about my platform and my campaign for president is that I feel like I have done my best to do the research from other institutions and this institution to find real solutions to the very real problems that we are currently facing. I already have pre-written legislation to actually create the Director of Legislative Affairs, which could be submitted as soon as I become president. There are things that we, we need to be working for right now, and I feel like I've done that legwork. And if you guys have any questions about my platform, you can find me on Facebook. Casey Steitler for ASU and President is the group, and I would be more than willing to explain my different platform points and exactly how I plan on achieving those goals for the university. Mr. Camp, ultimately is all 13,000, hopefully all 13,000 of the student body will vote. So what you're doing right now is you're choosing the right person for the right job at the right time. You're making a hiring decision, simply put. And you have three great candidates up here who have great credentials and experience. And uh, what I urge is to get all of y'all to go out and vote and get your friends vote, to get everybody out and involved. Um, we all have our platforms, which you can all find. Um, and I, you can also find me on Facebook. But the important thing is, I don't care who you vote for, I don't care who your friends vote for, but get everybody involved. Thank you. All right, that concludes the, the debate. So. Uh, does anybody know the score that you have to ask? We've had to hold it out a bit. We want to thank you for listening to the Nevada Station Rush, for watching the Nevada Station Rush live. Um, we want to thank you guys for listening to us tonight. Um, I believe on Wolfpack Radio we have uh, a secret final we'll be following next after this uh, debate tonight. So we encourage you to listen to Wolfpack Radio. Uh, it's not taking very long. It's going to be very long for Wolfpack Radio. Um, thank you again. Then the score of the game was what? 48 41 Nevada favor. That's it. Well, we would thank you again for listening to the debates. I encourage you to listen to the general debates that will take place next Friday, uh, February, Friday, March 5th, at Wolfpack Radio and the United States Thanks again, and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're done, guys. <laughs>